Out of My Mind, Chapter 31 The air felt thick and damp, like the silence that followed the screaming and crying and sirens. The rain had slowed to a drizzle. After Mom and Dad left with the ambulance, Mrs. V took me out of the car and sat me in my chair. She placed the soggy, filthy doodle on my tray. I found this under the car, she said, her voice shaky. I touched it and burst into tears. As she rolled me to her house, she said, We're going to clean Doodle up and have him waiting for Penny when she comes home. You hear? I couldn't tell if she was trying to convince me or herself. I felt dizzy and nauseous. I could not stop shaking. After changing my clothes into warm, dry sweats, she switched the radio to an easy listening station and turned the volume down low. The only color I, hear I heard was gray. Mrs. V stood behind me, gently rubbing my shoulders. Are you hungry? she asked. I shook my head no. She continued to mas massage my back and shoulders until we both could feel the tension slipping away. I'm going next door to get your meditaker and the dog, she said. You want anything else? I shook my head and continued to listen to the tones of Smoky Gray. When she got back, Buttersketch seemed nervous. She kept pacing and sniffing, as if she was looking for something. I think she's looking for Penny, Mrs. V said. Dogs, no. She hooked up Elvira to my chair and switched it on. But there was nothing either of us could say. It's not your fault, you know, she said finally. I shook my head forcefully. Mrs. V should know better than to, stay, than to say stuff just to make me feel better. I need it, Melody. It is not your fault. Yes, it is, I replied on my talker. I turned the volume up loud. Mrs. V walked around to where I could see her, leaned down until her face was just inches from my own. You did your best to warn your mother. You should be proud of yourself. Not proud. Not enough, I typed. Sometimes things happen that are beyond our control, Melody. You did everything right. The guilt bubbled up then. I was mad at Penny, I typed slower than usual. Penny knows you love her, she said. Tears slid down my cheeks, made Mom take me to school. So what? The fact that you insisted on going to school, even after what happened to you yesterday, shows you are a strong person, a better person than anyone else there. I'm proud of you for that. Don't be. I'm sure Penny will be just fine, Mrs. V said. Her voice, but her voice said otherwise. For the first time I could remember, Mrs. V sounded unsure. Will she die? I had to know. She was alive and breathing when the ambulance took her, so I'm going to believe that's still the case. Toddlers are very resilient, you know. I had to know something else. Her brain? Messed up? I asked. I had seen enough television shows on brain trauma to know it was possible. My classmate Jill had been in a car accident. I couldn't bear to see Penny like that. Mrs. V answered thoughtfully and honestly. I suppose it's possible, but I pray that's not the case. Two broken kids, I typed. Just the idea almost made me gag. That's not going to happen, Melody. But Mrs. V's voice wavered. I heard it. I was still for a moment. Then I typed, it should have been me. Huh? What do you mean? Nobody would miss me. Now, you just stop stupid talk like that. My whole world would fall apart if something happened to you. Your parents is as well. I'm not sure I believed her. I tilted my head. Really? I typed. I plan to wear purple to your college graduation. Far away and very hard. Like making the quiz team? They left me. And they lost. I glanced out of her large picture window and watched the wet branches sway. How could I say it? I looked back to my talker and typed very slowly. I want to be like other kids. So you want to be mean and fake and thoughtless? I looked up at her angry face, then looked away. No, normal. Normal sucks, she roared. People love you because you're Melody, not because of what you can or cannot do. Give us a little credit. 
I want it to be yesterday, I typed. Yesterday your heart was broken because they left you behind, remember? Rather have that than this. I know, Melody. Oh, Melody, I know. I'm scared. Me too. The silent room echoed our thoughts. I had a goldfish. He jumped out of his bowl, I typed then. I remember your mom telling me about it. Tried to save him. Couldn't. The phone rang then, startling both of us. I jerked in my chair. Mrs. V picked it up. Yes, she said. I strained to listen. Oh, no, she said. My heart dropped beneath my chair. She listened for a long time. Oh, yes, she said finally. Then she burst into tears and hung up. Is Penny dead? I typed. The whole world was spinning. Mrs. V wiped her eyes, looked at me, and took a deep breath. She has some internal injuries, a badly broken leg, but she survived the surgery. She's gonna live. Then she cried once more. Normal doesn't suck at all.